Right, so hello once again. Um, so this is a Sterling Engine project. Um, I'll give you a quick recap from last time when I tried the engine out. So we tried the engine out and it ran okay. Um, there was a few areas of um, potential concern. Um, one of those was the equalization of the temperature from the cold side to the hot side. Um, and the other one was actually the leakage from the leather seals. So I'll just take you over what I've um, done to try and rectify some of these problems. So I completely took the engine to pieces. Um, I've uh, well, yeah, I've replaced the leather seals. Uh, the original leather seals, they weren't actually worn out. Um, what was happening was the support ring that stops the leather seals collapsing in on themselves on the backstroke was actually holding the leather seals off of the of the piston. Um, so I think that was actually the main problem. Um, you also see here there's there's quite a bit of pipe work connected to things now. So what I've done is. Um, so this is this is a water jacket which I welded on. Um, the idea of this is this keep, this keep the cold side cold. Um, so you see see the pipe work. So it, it comes up through the original um, uh, original cooler uh, heat exchanger, up through the top, uh, down through the bottom, and then up through into the other water jacket. Then out the top of that and over to the other side. Um, on this side, on this is a hot side, to try and protect the leather seal a bit, um, I've added a water jacket. Um, this is a similar design to uh, what the Ryder, Ryder hot air compression engine had fitted. So that pipe underneath obviously goes up through that one and hopefully that'll stop the heat transfer beyond this point on the um, on the cylinder to get into the leather jacket leather seal also on the hot side um, under this uh, uh, exhaust wrapping I've actually got insulation that I've wrapped around quite a few times so hopefully this will keep the hot side um, hot and the uh, and then the cold side should be cold so, so that's what I've done there um, so we got there is one area of concern I forgot the look at it when I took it the bits and that was the actual um, the pistons. There seems to be leakage coming from inside the pistons. A um, uh, somebody mentioned in the comments that it seemed like there was smoke coming from the inside of of the piston on the hot side, and um, I think that might have been true because when I turn it over, I can I can hear slight leakage from within. Um, it's a pity now because I've obviously put the engine all back together again. <laughs> so um, so I have to leave that for a moment. But next time I I have to rip it a bit. So. Uh, I'll have, to, I'll have to try and rectify that as well. Yep, so there you go. Um, so we're all ready to fire the thing up now. So I'll just get it outside a minute. One thing I forgot to mention is I've actually added um, some foil tape, a reflective uh, foil tape to it to try and um, reflect some of the heat. So I've added it to the cooling jacket um, and also to the side of uh, the, the cooler heat exchanger as well. I'm using a bit better quality wood this time. I was using some old pallet wood last time, but the, um, the very open grain in it didn't seem to give out a great deal of heat. So hopefully this will be a bit better. The insulation is um, just smoking a little bit. I'm sure that will stop eventually. Right, let's give it a spin. Close off the, uh, the valve. So I'm going to record the time this time. So at the moment it is quarter to 12. So that's five minutes in, it's 
so it's picking up some real speed now. So there you go, we're now 25 minutes in, still going strong. I'm just going to do a quick walk round of um, observations for anyone interested. So the fire is now settled down into a, a normal fire. I got some better wood this time. Um, I've managed to turn the draft down so it's given a gentle heat but not smoking. So all good bet on that front. Um, look at temperatures. So we got the, the cold heat exchanger. Now the temperature of the water coming out of that is about, I would say, the best part of 25 degrees, something like that, 28 degrees, something like that, not well, 30 at the most. And that pipe goes all the way through to this jacket, and the, the water coming out of that jacket is a tad warmer, just a little tad warmer again, um, and the water coming out of the... Uh, uh, the jacket here to protect the leather seal is a, a little bit warmer again. So I've got a gentle trickle water coming out of here. One thing I have noticed is the, the knocking coming from the pistons. Now what I think that is, is in this portion of the piston, I think the piston is jumping up and down. When I put it back together, I thought I'd have a go at using some uh, carbon graphite slides um, to see if that would uh, be better than the PTFE. Uh, the reason I changed it is the PTFE on the hot side was getting a little bit too hot and it was um, melting and wearing away. Um, but they are a little bit knocky, so maybe not the solution for this. You, there is various grinding noises coming from the piston assemblies. I think the graphite carbon is actually breaking down because there's some there's some odd noises coming from it to say the to say the least. So I think I'm going to have to have another better look at that. I think. Um, everything else is going okay though. So there you go, I'm about half an hour into the run now. Uh, I'm going to terminate things there because um, I've already made some sort of observations and I sort of got a slight idea of the um, what to do next. Um, so what I'm thinking of is to actually rip the engine to bits again. Um, it shouldn't be too bad, it's only a few um, flange bolts and uh, the whole lot falls to pieces. Um, I need to look at the guides for the piston, um, try and work something out that's a bit quieter. You can, you can probably hear that knocking in the background at the moment. Um, and the other thing I want to look at is um, uh, look at the, uh, the, the pistons as well, because they got, um, there, are, there is slight leaks in the bottom of the pistons where I've welded, welded things in. Um, so I'll look, I'll look at that and, um, and repair those leaks as well while I'm at it. Um, so I think that's probably all I'm going to be doing, um, unless anybody else has got any, any better ideas. Um, so I'll leave you to it. All the best. See you again, bye. One more thing to mention, because I'm sure somebody's going to pick up on it. Uh, this fire um, place is not suitable for burning wood. Um, <clears throat> that's because all the air is coming from beneath the wood. Um, you'd have that on a, um, like a coal fire. Um, but a wood fire, the, the, uh, the air is meant to sort of blow across the wood as such. And then you'd have a little bit of um, air from the bottom. Um, but that, that's what I've got to say about that.